Are you trying to use bottom navigation with Jetpack Navigation 3 but confused by how the back stack should work? In this video I'll show you exactly how to set it up, including how to switch back to the default tab when the user presses back from the root of another tab, instead of exiting the app right away. So just some quick setup, you probably have an idea from the screens you've just seen, but these are the routes we have. In the home tab there's just home, you can press a button to go to the detail, and within the notes it has the following screens. We're using Remember Nav Backstack which was covered in the last video. I'd recommend watching that if you haven't already. It goes over the basics of Jetpack Navigation 3. So the first thing we're going to do is create the bottom nav items. So in our case it's just going to be a list of our home object and our note list object. Then we can add the bottom bar into our scaffold and we're going to use navigation bar for this. Now we'll loop through our bottom nav items using for each and in here we can add navigation bar item. Now the three fields we need are selected, on click and icon. So for now I'm just going to put selected as false with a little to do comment, we'll come to this later. But we need to get the icon from somewhere and we'll also add a label. So to get these we're going to create an interface named bottom nav item. And within this we'll have the icon which will be an image vector. And we'll also have a title which will be a string. Now our top level screens, which in our case is home and note list, can implement this bottom nav interface. And within here we can provide our icon and title. So the icon for home is going to be, we'll just use icons.filled.home provided by material. And the title we can set to home. And we'll do exactly the same for note list. But our icon this time will be icons.automirrored.filled.notes, again provided by material. The title will just set to notes. So if we just hover over bottom nav items here, we can see that it's automatically detected that it's using bottom nav item. So this item here, again, we should be able to access these properties. So within this icon code block, we'll use icon, provide an image vector of item.icon. We'll set a content description to the title, so item.title, and we can use this title within label as well. And just say text item.title. Now similarly to selected, we're just going to ignore the on click for now and we'll come back to that soon. Now I've just run the app to help explain the top level backstack. So the goal, we're going to create a top level backstack and within that it's going to hold a separate backstack for each of these bottom nav items. So this means in the home, if we press go to detail and now we're in home detail, switch to the notes bottom nav item and then switch back to home, we'll still have this backstack so we'll still be in home detail. So we'll create the class for our top level backstack. And this is going to take in a start key. And this start key is going to be a generic type of T, which will implement the nav key interface. So now we can add our map of backstacks. We'll do that with a private variable. We'll name it top level backstacks. And this is going to be a map of type T to a snapshot state list of type T. We can declare this as instantiated as map of start key to mutable state list of and also pass in the start key there. So all this is saying if we just do this in an init block if we access top level backstacks and in our case pass in our home key, 
this is just going to return the back stack for this home item. So in this case, it's going to return a list of home and home detail at the current point in time in this app. So we'll delete that and there's a few more things we need to declare. So the first will be a top level key. So this is just keeping track of which bottom nav items selected. And we'll use the by delegate here and say by mutable state of, and it can just start as the start key. Now we're going to make the setter private for this. This is because we want to be able to observe this so we know which is selected, but the class itself is going to handle actually setting which one's active. And the next property we need is the actual backstack that's going to be observed by the nav display. So that needs to be a mutable state list and we'll use type T here and we can pass in the start key. So we can start or actually implement this now. So up here we'll declare val top level backstack equals remember and instantiate a top level backstack. And we'll just give this a type of nav key and we'll pass in home. So the first thing we can now work out is whether the item is selected. So we know whether it highlighted in the bottom bar. But for this, we can say val selected equals top level backstack dot top level key and check if this equals the item. So we'll set this here. And the next thing we can do is instead of passing our old backstack to the nav display, we can pass top level backstack dot backstack. So there's still a new functions we need to add to make this work. The first we're going to name switch top level. This is going to take in a key and this is what we're going to call when we click on one of the bottom nav items and we'll pass in the corresponding key. So the first thing we're going to do is check our top level backstacks, pass in our key and if the resulting backstack is null, we can set this to be a mutable state list of just the key provided. So for example, when we've instantiated our top level backstack and passed in the home key, this map here knows nothing about our notes. So when we call switch top level and pass in notes, it's going to be null for the notes backstack. So this is where we're first setting it. So one small change we need to make here, this should be a hash map. And similarly, we'll say hash map of. This is just so we can set it down here. The next thing we'll do is set the top level key to the key that's been passed in. And now the next function we can add, we'll name it add. And we'll also pass in a key. And all this is going to do is add to the current backstack. So we'll get the current backstack first using top level key as the key. And we can just call add and pass the key. We'll add a remove last function. So this is useful for when we need to go back or pop the backstack. And similarly to the add function, we're going to get the current backstack using the top level key and call remove last or null. Now, one other function that may be useful is we'll name this replace stack. And what this will do, we'll pass in uh, variable arguments of type T of our keys, and we'll set the current back stack, so based on top level key again, to be a mutable state list of the keys that we've just passed in. We'll need to use the spread operator for this. So this is almost functional. There is one last thing we need to do. This backstack's being observed, but it's never actually being updated. We'll create a function here. We'll make it private, just named update backstack. And all we want this to do is just set this backstack to the current backstack. So based off the top level key. So to start, we'll just clear it. And then we'll say add all and we can just get top level backstacks, use the key 
or if it's null, we'll just give it an empty list. Now this update backstack needs to be called with all of these functions. So we're just going to crudely add it to the end of each of these functions. So now we'll actually make use of this class. So I'm just going to delete this old backstack that we were using. And we'll see we're full of errors now. All we need to do is replace everything to use our top level backstack. So I'll just paste this in here. And rather than remove last or null, we'll use our, our own remove last function. We've got an add function that we've created. So the way these are all getting swapped out is one to one. So it's going to be remove last, another add. And down here where we're calling clear and add all, this is where we can use the replace stack function that we created and pass in note list and note detail. So we'll run this and just check that it all works. So you can see we're starting on the home screen. Uh, yes, sorry, one last thing we need to add. Our on click, we need to call top level backstack switch level and here we can just pass in our item so as you can see it's switching to each back stack and in home if we go to the detail switch to notes and go back to home we're still in home detail so it still has this back stack so we go back now back to home so from this point one thing we might want to add if i click into notes now just come into one of the details if I press back and back again you'll notice it closes the app what we want in a lot of cases is if we're at the root of one of the the bottom nav items that isn't the default tab we want it to switch back to the default tab back into this back stack and then once we press back from the root of in our case home that's when it'll close out of the app so to do this, we want to update our backstack accordingly. So for this example, when we're in notes, our backstack should fully represent what happens when we keep clicking back. So at this moment in time, it should be a backstack of home and then note list. So I'm going to delete this line. We still want to clear the backstack to start, but first we want to get the current backstack Then we want to check if we're already in the starting tab. So to do that, we're going to make this into a property of the class. And then we can check if the top level key is equal to the start key. If it is, then we just want to do exactly what we've been doing before. So we'll do backstack dot add all and just add the current stack back in. Otherwise, we need to get the starting stack. To do that, we'll say start stack equals top level back stacks, and this time we'll use the start key. Then we'll add the starting stack plus the current stack. So if we work backwards and we just keep pressing the back button, it's going to go through all of the current stack, in this case notes, and then end up with just the start stack left and work its way back through there. And there's one more thing we need to do. In our remove last function, when we press back out of our last screen within a tab, we need to switch the top level key to be the start key. So we'll just get rid of all of this for now. The first thing we'll do is get the current back stack. So we'll use top level key for that. I'm just going to return out if it doesn't exist. And we can check if the back stack has more than one item. And if it does, all we need to do is just exactly like we did before, just remove last or null. If the current stack has exactly one item or less than or equal to one, and if the top level key does not equal the start key, 
So in other words, if we're not currently at the starting tab, then we need to switch to it. So we'll say top level key equals start key. And lastly, we just need to call update backstack. So we'll rerun this. And firstly, we'll just go into notes and then press back. As you can see, it's gone to home and back again, exits the app. Next, we'll add something to the home backstack. So we're into home detail and we'll go into notes, add a couple into the notes backstack. As you can see, we can still swap between these two. And now if I keep clicking back from the notes backstack, you'll see it works its way back through notes and we're back to home and then it exits the app. I took a lot of inspiration for this video from the Nav3 Recipes repository. I'll leave a link to this in the description, but as you'll see, there's lots of examples of how to use Navigation 3 within here, and I definitely recommend checking it out. Thanks for watching. Thank you.